was a... Meeting to order, please. Uh, you know I'm shy, so. <laughs> this is the Village of Riverside Board of Trustees regular meeting for Thursday, July 11th, 2013. The time is 7:04, and I would ask our clerk to please call the roll. Trustee uh, President Sauls here. Trustee Sussman here. Trustee Hamilton here. Trustee Ballerine here. Trustee Collins here. Trustee Foley here. Also present, Village Manager Scalera here. Village Attorney Molina. Here. Village Attorney Mars. Here. And Village Clerk Kathy Haley. Thank you very much. If you'll please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, as always, anyone in the audience is welcome to speak at any time during our meetings. You can speak during the time the item is being discussed on our agenda. You can speak earlier if you prefer. I just ask that you be recognized by me and that you make your comments from the podium so that everyone at home can hear you uh, and watch you on television. Our first item of business tonight is public comment. And we're especially honored tonight to have with us State Representative Michael Zaleski. Uh, Representative Zaleski, I think it's fair to say, is Riverside's voice in Springfield. Uh, he's a resident. He's best known for being the husband of Carrie Zaleski. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's right. And we're delighted he's here. He, uh, he has to come tonight to talk to us a little bit about pension reform and some other state-related issues. So Representative Zaleski, welcome. We look forward to hearing your comments. And um, I don't know, is this just for the purposes of the, does it amplify voice or is it just no, for the, okay. Uh, so thank you to the board. Um, I, I thought it was actually a really good idea of President Sells to, to have me here tonight because I think the issue of pension reform um, and what the state does with respect to that specific issue has a lot of bearing on, on local communities like, like Riverside. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, this past spring, the General Assembly engaged in a, in a heated battle over how to tackle a $190 billion in, in unfunded pension debt. Um, the Senate passed a version, and the House passed a version. And for a lot of different reasons, they, they weren't called in each other's chamber. Or they were, but didn't get the requisite number of votes. So in, in the summer, um, the two leaders uh, formed a conference committee, and I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to, to land on that committee, depending on your view of the issue. We've had three public hearings. Um, we've come across what I consider to be a strong framework that's currently being scored by actuaries that deals with tying um, the cost of living adjustments to uh, what's called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. Um, deals with some other issues uh, when it comes to the pension and it was proposed by the state university systems um, who had a chance to vet the proposal internally and thought it would save them a lot of money. So um, we are awaiting those results. We're gonna get some tomorrow, we're gonna get some next week. And it's my expectation we'll have a, a, a proposal here in the, in the near future. In the meantime, um, we, we had some news yesterday from the governor, uh, so I, I, I joke around, people are like telling me like, oh, how you doing, is everything okay, is, are you gonna make it? And, 
you know, it, it's nice, but, but the truth of the matter is no one has a lot of sympathy for us right now, and perhaps rightfully so. And, um, you know, I, I, I read a lot of the coverage this morning about the, the governor's decision to, to freeze our pay, and a lot of people are supportive, and they, they think that um, we, we deserve to sit out a couple of series until we get this thing figured out, and I can't blame them. So um, don't let my wife but you know I said that. <laughs> but um, in any event, we uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna work hard, and um, a lot of these peripheral issues are sorted themselves out. But uh, ultimately, what's important for the I think residents of Riverside to know is how much of an impact our inability to to, to deal with what is a a large payment to the pension systems every every year does to our ability to core basic services, and. None of us wish to take away an annuity of, of a person who's in retirement or nearing retirement. We simply want to adjust some of the issues that go into that annuity to, to make it more cost sustainable so we can do basic state services like keep bad guys in jail and offer help to families with children. And um, we could do some other things like improve our infrastructure. Um, we were out at a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago with the, the president and um, members of the high school and Chief Weitzel and, you know, there's a large infrastructure uh, issue at First Avenue and Forest and it requires some major infrastructure work and things like that have to get done and right now we're not able to do those things well. So that that's my report. Um, we, I'm happy, I guess the, answer, the best thing to do now is take any questions or if there's anyone from the audience that would happen to have any questions. I know this issue is, is, is difficult and people have a wide varying um, array of opinions, but you know, I think it's important for me to make myself available to the, to the elected representatives of the town and anyone who came here to see if, if they want to just yell and get things off their chest, if they want to have, a, if they want to have any questions that they're unsure of the answer to. but. Um, does anyone in the trustees or anyone from the audience? Go ahead, go ahead. So uh, I don't know if you can do this quickly. Um, is it, how does what you're working on differ from the Madigan a, or the Cullerton proposals that were out there before? It's a, it's a really good question. Um, universities proposed a very simple concept that has the potential to save a lot of money. Um, what they said was, let's simply, there's each new one in the systems has what's called a cold or a cost of living increase. Um, that's, that's an automatic 3% increase. What, what the university said is it may be fairer to simply tie that to what's called half of CPI or half of the Social Security index that seniors get right now. That, that rate fluctuates. You know, we're in periods of low inflation right now. So right now the, the line is pretty low. It has very well the opportunity to go higher than 3% or 6%, which would be half. Um, so there's a little bit of bargaining there or consideration if, if, if you're an attorney. So um, the difference in the, in the Madigan plan, the plan that I supported was that has a cap on your ability to collect compound interest. Uh, Senator Cullerton's plan has this idea that you'll give up your subsidized health care for uh, a, a simple interest. You'll, you'll keep your subsidized health care and get simple interest or give up your subsidized health care from the state and keep your compounding interest with these pauses in between. Those of us, there's some of us who feel that may not be bringing enough savings, especially to bring that an annual payment. So that's really the core difference of what we're talking about. What else? What other questions? Well, uh, as, as Ben said, I office here in Riverside in the arcade building. Um, I'm on the third floor. Um, so, you know, we do our very best to make ourselves available to the community. Please, please, if you have any questions or this, these things that, on this issue or any other issue, please feel free to call um, or email or, or write a letter or just stop by. We're here and uh, I wish you guys good luck on your meeting tonight. Thank you, Representative. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And, yeah, I, I just want to say, uh, I mean, it's one thing to hear a representative say that he wants to be available and respond, but I can tell you from personal experience that Representative Zalowski 
does respond, and we really appreciate your representation for us. And I, for one, am very glad that you're one of the 10 that's working on this very, very difficult problem. Thank, Thank you, you for your service. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We are lucky to have him. Um, we're going to have a little bit more public comment, but I saw some folks just walk in. Where did our friends from? There's our friends from Floor back there in the back. Uh, did you, Adriani, are you ready to say a few words about your, uh, or Roger, did you want to say a few words about your new business? This is, this is an exciting opportunity here. Uh, I hope some of our residents have already seen the new bakery, the gluten-free bakery floor that's in the arcade building. So I asked uh, two, of, two of the partners to come here tonight, Roger and Adriana, to tell us a little bit about the, about the business and get us up to speed. I to say yum. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> I, I'm a brownie snob well, and they score, I tell you. Well, I would so, love to right. say that I had anything to do with it, but um, Adriana is the brains behind it and, and the creator of the uh, uh, what we have today is floor, and, and I can't tell you how excited we are to be here in Riverside. And uh, the reception that we've gotten thus far has been incredible, exceeds ex expectations. Uh, we have been able to keep uh, inventory on the shelves, which is a good thing. Uh, Adrian has been working around the clock to they had to pull her out of here to get to come over here for the meeting. So uh, we're very, very excited, and we've got a lot of big plans, and hopefully uh, bring lots and lots of people come to see how beautiful Riverside is. You want to talk a little bit about the company or the products and things of that nature? So as everyone knows, it's a gluten-free, 100% dedicated facility to gluten-free. And like I've said before, we're here to revolutionize the gluten-free market to let people know that just because you have gluten intolerance, your product does not have to taste flavorless or look bad or be dense, that it can taste really good. And um, a lot of people have coming in, they don't even know it's gluten-free, and then we tell them, by the way, it's gluten-free, and they say, no way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, we're so excited. We are have so many plans for um, more products. We're looking to, to um, sell our gluten-free mix so people can make their, their chocolate chip cookies or pancakes or crepes at home and just keep expanding. If you guys have any suggestions for flavors, please let me know. I can work that into the mix. Maybe we can have flavor of the month by a resident. And um, we, we are just so happy to be here. Thank you. And I, and I want to say, too, the, the actual build out you did, the, the place is beautiful. Yeah. It's really lovely what you've done. And I encourage everybody to stop by and, and uh, try a brownie. Yeah. <laughs> or a muffin or a biscotti. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I don't know if everybody knows that scientifically, gluten free means there are no calories. <laughs> yeah. so, so. Well, thank you and welcome to Riverside. Thank you. Thank you. Um, opening the other morning, but we are going to have a, a formal ribbon cutting for, for Fleur on July 18th at 5.30. So if anybody would like to come by and take part of the celebration to welcome them to our village, I hope you'll do so. So anybody else would like to say anything to the board before we move on with our agenda? No? Okay. Seeing no one, we're going to move on to the reports of village officers. Uh, up first is my report. And first on the agenda is a motion to appoint the following individuals to the Parks and Recreation Board. And of course, this is following the dissolution of the Parks and Recreation Commission and the reestablishing of the, of the Parks and Recreation Board. And so I would ask for a motion to appoint Katie Leander as chairperson for a term to expire May 15, 2014, Tracy Sloan for a term to expire May 15, 2015, Susan Casey for a term to expire May 15, 2015, and James Brand for a term to expire May 1, 2016. As for a motion and a second. So motion. Sorry. Any discussion? Sorry, Joe. You want the second, Joe? Uh, first, second. So Mr. Foley for the motion, Mr. Valerie for the second. You guys agree on that? That's right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so any discussion? <laughs> All right, would you please call for the roll? Aye. Trustee Hamilton. Aye. Trustee Ballerine. Aye. Trustee Collins. Aye. Trustee Foley. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Um, all of the commissioners are, or the board members are not here tonight, so they will actually be sworn in at their next official board meeting by our village clerk. Next up is a motion to appoint uh, two new members of the Economic Development Commission. Uh, Thomas Lupfer is going to remain as chairperson 
for a term to expire May 15, 2014. He is already serving. The two new commissioners will be uh, Donald Pagani for a term to expire May 15, 2017, and Keith Wright for a term to expire May 15, 2017. So I'd ask for a motion in a second. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Hamilton, a second by Ms. Collins. Any discussion? Um, I could just say a brief word. Uh, I could not be the happier that Keith and Don have agreed to serve on the EDC. They bring, they bring exactly the kind of passion and skill set and dedication to trying to get this village moving forward that we're looking for. And it goes to the heart of work we're going to be speaking about tonight later with regard to implementing the CMAP plan. And I also want to thank uh, Commissioner Jurs and uh, Commissioner Leander, who uh, have left the board, and Keith and Don are taking their place. So we're very, very fortunate to have you. So with that, would you please call the vote? Trustee Sussman. Aye. Trustee Hamilton. Aye. Trustee Valerie. Aye. Trustee Collins. Aye. Trustee Foley. Aye. Motion carries. And now we have the fun part of swearing them in. So which of you gentlemen would like to go first? Okay. And our village clerk will do the honors. Pardon me? Yes, I would do it up at the podium so everybody can see. Need you to raise your right hand. I, Donald Pogani. Pogani. Pogani, sorry. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully perform the duties. And I, that I will faithfully perform the duties. Of the Office of Economic Development the, Commissioner. Of the duties of Economic Development Commission. For the village of Riverside, Illinois. For the village of Riverside, Illinois. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Keith Wright. I, Keith Wright. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully perform the duties. And that I will faithfully perform the duties. Of the Office of Economic Development Commissioner. Of the Office of Economic Development Commissioner. For the Village of Riverside, Illinois. For the Village of Riverside, Illinois. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, and welcome aboard. So that is all I, I have this evening. Next up is the uh, village manager's report. Um, the only item I have on my uh, report is uh, a reminder to re residents um, that may have been affected by the um, storm event earlier this year that FEMA has extended the deadline for uh, filing applications for assistance through FEMA to July 24th, 2013. That is all I have. Thanks, Jim, Manager Scalera. Um, you know, before before we kind of plow into the, the heavy lifting for tonight, Trustee Ballard, would you would you like to say sure. a few words about the July 3rd and 4th celebration? Um, sure. Uh, the weather ended up being perfect. Um, we had over 3,000 people in Guthrie Park on Wednesday night, um, which was absolutely phenomenal. If you think of that, one third of the population of Riverside was in River, was in Guthrie Park, um, which was amazing. Um, they 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 loved the festivities. Uh, the Brat Pack did a did a great job entertaining everyone. Um, all of our food vendors ran out of food. Um, I came by at six o'clock in the morning um, to, I usually swing by uh, uh, on my way to blow up balloons just to clean up, just to pick up and stuff. And there was 3,300 people in the park. I picked up one beer can, one beer bottle, and one taco wrapper. 
which absolutely, I mean, is, 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 is amazing because it wasn't because, I mean, Public Works obviously did a wonderful job. We had volunteers out there cleaning, but, you know, it was 11 o'clock at night when people left. And, and if they threw their garbage all over the floor or all over the, the park, it would, have, it would have been there the next morning. Um, so the place was, was absolutely pristine. Um, so for that, I, um, I thank the people, of the, the residents of Riverside, and uh, they appreciate their parks uh, immensely. Um, Friday, or, uh, Thursday, we had over 480 runners running in the annual 4th of July parade, or in the 4th of July 5K run, um, in which I was uh, one of them, passed by attorney Mars at the second mile marker. <laughs> He obviously doesn't know client golf, um, <laughs> but that's another story. Um, uh, we followed by uh, 40 years gone. Uh, Mike Aida, village resident, played at the at the uh, uh, festival, the festivities. We had ponies, uh, which were always being ridden. Face painters, which had a line around the door. Clowns, uh, jumpy houses. Uh, uh, a lot of different things and it was wonderful and I was fortunate enough to buy some wonderful plants and they're already planted in my garden so uh, I think it was a great two days so thank you for all the department heads for their help thank you for the auxiliary police they uh, they come out the police department the fire department the village staff of course Ron uh, Teresa Stevie and the recreation department um, it was it was amazing and it, it couldn't be done there's a lot of moving co uh, cogs in this wheel and uh, uh, everyone pulls their weight, so I, I, I thoroughly appreciate it from uh, the Friends of the Fourth and as a village trustee. Yeah, I would second all that. Our, our village staff did a wonderful job, so I trust you will pass that on to them, and thank you to the Friends of the Fourth for their constant support over the years. It was a lot of fun. By, all I know is by the end of the evening, the kids had kind of been pushed out of, the, out of the way, and all the adults were at the front of the stage, and somebody's <laughs> wife was being tossed up in the air. <laughs> so, so. It was a fun night. <laughs> so next up on our agenda is the approval of the consent agenda. Uh, it, and I did have actually one, one minor correction to one of, the, one of the items for our village clerk under the, the uh, landscape advisory, oh, I'm sorry, under the, uh, the historical commission meeting minutes of April 22nd. There's at one point in there it says that there was a motion seconded by, by me and I think they meant sellers, commissioner <coughs> sellers. Okay. So, so with other than that, you see you see the uh, posted items of the bills in the, the the meeting minutes, and also I'll say a, a word in a minute after we approve all this about the uh, employment agreement with Manager Scalera. But does any anybody need anything removed from the consent agenda before? Okay, hearing none, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Sussman, second by Trustee Hamilton. Any discussion? Hearing none, will you please call the roll? Trustee Sussman. Aye. Trustee Hamilton. Aye. Trustee Ballerine. Aye. Trustee Collins. Aye. Trustee Foley. Aye. Okay, carries. And I just wanted to point out that on the consent agenda for the evening is a renewal for four years of, uh, I'm very pleased to say, of our contract with our village manager, Peter Scalera, uh, who is agreed to stay with us for at least another four years, hopefully much longer than that. We're very lucky to have Manager Scalera. His, his kindness, his gentleness, his leadership ability, and his, his dedication to the village is extraordinary. And uh, I'm very, very glad to be able to work alongside him. So Thank Peter, you. welcome back. I like it when he blushes like this. <laughs> Uh, we have no reports tonight of departments or commissions unless I'm missing something. No, nope. no. Uh, we also have no ordinances or, or, nor, or resolutions to consider. So that brings us to our main topic of discussion for tonight, which is uh, a consideration of priorities and strategies for implementing the CMAP plan. The trustees have been given an outline that was also available in the, the agenda packet for this evening of a suggested implementation of priorities for the CMAP plan that, tr that Manager Scalera and I <coughs> provided. And it also includes a number of ideas that we got from residents and other trustees. 
just as a, as a prelude to our discussion, in my mind, the, the CMAP plan that we adopted a few months ago really sets up two primary goals for our village. And one is to give a reason for people to come to Riverside, especially our central business district, and then to make it as easy as possible for them to do so. The outline that you have before you tonight is drawn largely from the CMAP plan that the board adopted earlier this year. There are a few other new ideas in there that we'll talk about as we go through it, but even those ideas are in keeping with the broader ideas that, and themes that were set out by CMAP. What I'm hoping to accomplish tonight is not an in-depth discussion of each individual item on the outline that, that you've been given. You will see in the outline that there are lead implementers that have been identified for the various action items. The idea is that the lead implementers, many of whom are our commissions and our boards, and I'm delighted to see a lot of our commissioners and board members here tonight. The idea is that the lead implementer, as the name suggests, is responsible for getting things done. Uh, the idea is that the lead implementer will then go out and garner input and advice from whatever organizations or groups or individuals that they think it is appropriate to reach out to. Now on the outline, as we go through it, I will mention certain of those groups, but those, the, the outline is not intended to be exhaustive by any means. The lead implementers are charged with getting these projects accomplished and reaching out to the various people that they need to get advice and consideration to get them accomplished. Some of the items, as we go through, you'll see are relatively, relatively inexpensive. Some are without overt cost. Some will require considerable study, not only with regard to cost, but even to feasibility. For example, one of the items is the idea of having a canoe livery or a kayak livery. As I sit here tonight, I don't know whether that's, that is something that's possible or not. I don't know in terms of safety, navigability of the waterways, but those are the kind of issues that the lead implementers are charged with investigating, studying, and then bringing back to us it, with in terms of, of precise steps to, to move forward. So that's the general idea. Now, Manager Scalera and I have presented the, the items in what we think is an appropriate ranking of priority, but really it's up to this board as we go through everything tonight to decide what order of priority they want, whether they want things deleted, whether they want things added. Uh, so this is, in many ways, this is gonna be more of a workshop kind of setting tonight, so I encourage a lot of discussion and, and interaction about this. But I do want, to, I do want before we plow in, to, to just emphasize the, what I think is the extraordinary opportunity that we have before us. I firmly believe that we are at a kind of golden moment in, in the history of our, of, our, of our village. I think that we have the government, I think that we have the staff, I think we have the Chamber of Commerce, and I think most of all we have the residents that we need that are dedicated to finally getting these kind of projects implemented. Uh, but we need to understand, and let's be perfectly clear about this, the, the challenge ahead of us is significant, which is exactly why it's worth doing. Because the opportunity that comes along with that challenge is to create a village that's not only something that we will enjoy, but something that our children and our grandchildren will enjoy. I've spoken often about that this is our village and this is our time. It is up to us to leave a legacy for the future. Uh, there are folks, as when they listen to this discussion tonight, will, that will say, no, here we go again. Another study, something else to go up on the shelf. I understand that, that skepticism. I, I am not without doubt myself, but if we allow that skepticism to, to bleed over to cynicism or to pessimism, then all we've done is create a self-fulfilling self prophecy of failure, and that is what we cannot allow to happen. This is our moment. So with that kind of encouragement, <laughs> uh, I think the best way to proceed is simply to plow in, uh, and we will just begin to go through the various items one at a time. What I've done uh, in this, this outline is to 
really break things down into two phases. Phase one are really the items that I think can be accomplished in the, sh in the relatively short term, being over the next year or so, that, and that can, for the most part, be done at little or low cost. Phase two are much more substantial, things like improving the streetscape in our business district, uh, uh, improving the trainscape, considering an alternative use of the youth center, that kind of thing. So with regard to phase one, they Excuse are- me. I'm sorry, I just have a general question. Sure. I, I would, could have, would appreciate an, just some help in understanding what, what's gonna happen after we leave tonight, because we don't really know how much, even though we'd like to do a lot of these, and we may assume they don't require much staff time or much commission time or much money, we don't really know. So I just would like to make sure we're not approving anything tonight to go forward with, right? We're just prioritizing. What, exactly. what, okay, so we're not saying we're gonna do any of this. Well, some of it's in place already, but by us saying that we're going to that signage at the begin at the entrances to the village is we want to proceed with that. We're not okaying paying for signage at the entrance to the village, right, Peter? Right. Well, that's okay. right. But, but but on the other hand, we're not just talking either. So what um, is the purpose when the, we leave tonight? What what's the next step? Well, I think I think if if we start the process, I think that will be a self-answering question. If we can just go through a few of them, I think you'll see. Because really the idea, let's, let me, we can take the first one for example, uh, under the government initiatives. In terms of streamlining the review process for business district proposals, or reviewing the commission structure for, and procedures, uh, those kind of things are already underway. Now those are the things that are, being, that are really being handled by, by the village staff and the relevant and the relevant commissions. So so those things are already underway. The the second item, and maybe this is this will answer your question more directly, the second item is to update the business sign ordinance. Because over the years we've had a lot of discussion about the, the way we currently do signage and this was a, a very important part of the of the C map. And Nora Beck just walked in from C map. I'm glad to have her here tonight. Uh, so and the outline we have that we have down that the plan commission would be the, the lead implementer of reviewing and updating the business sign ordinance with input from the EDC, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Preservation Commission. Mm -hmm. So what we're basically doing is charging the plan commission to begin that work. And they will bring in then the EDC, the Chamber of Commerce, the Preservation Commission, and other groups and organizations as they see fit to try to address that, that issue of how what we want to do to update our business sign ordinance in order to help kickstart and revitalize our business community. And they would bring those recommendations they would, back to us. They would bring those recommendations On back. On any one of these things. Right. And if there are costs involved, obviously we're, we hold the purse strings. They would bring a cost estimate, they would bring a schedule, a time schedule in which they think these, this work can be done back to us for consideration and then we will approve these things as, as they're ready. And uh, Ms. Beck with CMAP has, has already started working on a, on a and basically a, a matrix to, to blend these, these items in with the existing items in CMAP with regard to staging the various events. But a lot of these things we're going to have to hear back. We're going to have to hear back from the commissions about what they think a proper, a, a realistic time frame is in order to get these projects done. So really what we're looking for tonight is our, as we go through, do we agree that these are, these are things that we want to pursue? And if we there's want to study. this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, we want we that's a difference. We yeah, want to study with an eye toward doing them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I mean, I just, let me show you. Something. Uh, this this is a partial binder of past studies that have been done in this village starting from 1980. There is, and as, and as Nora can, can attest, there is remarkable consensus in these studies. I think that we know what needs doing. Six is enough. What's that? Six is enough. Six is enough. <laughs> so yes, you know, I just, what, what, I, what I don't want to see happen is that, is that this is, I don't want to see this stuck in the study phase. At some point, yes, I mean, I've been saying I want to lose 10 pounds for I don't know how long. At some point, I actually know what I need to do to lose the 10 pounds. And it's not going to happen unless I have the will and the, and the, and the discipline to do it. And that's what, that's what I think that we have to do. We have to, to instill that kind of will and discipline 
and encourage our commissions to bring that kind of willingness and discipline to these projects to get them done. But of course, anything requiring money is going to come back to us first. Will and discipline. And, and, you're, and you're saying it's more than 10 pounds, right? Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I, I just want to say it's will and discipline coming from the guy that said he was a brownie. So. <laughs> That's right. But I also said gluten meant calorie free. So. Are, we, are we also, when we, when we charge the plan commission with this, this, this task to get EDC and preservation, are we also saying that uh, we, we, we want this done and we would like this done by November 10th? Are we going to, I mean, that's the other thing is, is, you know, do we give them a date? Do we give them, you know, a, you know a, where we get something back? Else this could, this is, I could see. I know. think that's the most difficult question. And, and as we go through here, I think we're probably going to have to answer that for each one of these. Because it seems to me that in terms of an initial report back, yeah, for example, one of the things on here is uh, a review of the permitted and special use designations. Well, we've already told the plan commission that we want their report back to us by our first meeting in August which was a realistic time frame. Right. But, but it's, I just want to emphasize that having them come back to us, say, by November 1st, I, what I would expect is that they would then come back to us with then an extended time frame. Okay, we've looked at this. This is what we think is possible. This is what we think it's going to cost. And this, this is the progression and time frame over which we think it could happen. So that's the, that's the general. I mean, this, this is admittedly amorphous. Uh, by necessity, because these, these are ideas that, uh, that require study and require expertise that are beyond the, the you know, seven people setting up here. So, so this is going to be a work in progress, but I, mean, I can tell you from the commissions I've gone to and talked about this, our commissioners, are, they're ready. They're ready and they're excited to do this. So, but I think we should do that as we go through. I think we should, we should peg some realistic time frames to have initial reports back from, from the commissions and the boards. And, and Any other general and, comments? I'm sorry. And, and, and item A, I, I believe uh, the review of the commission structure and procedures, I believe you, you've also asked the end of August for that? Or September? Uh, Mid-September. Mid-September for that. Right. Great. And so far as I know, all of that is, is well underway and, mm -hmm. and moving apace. So, uh, I apologize a little bit to the folks here who are in the audience because you don't have this document in front of you. Uh, but what I will do, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll take each item uh, or, or like each kind of major topic, I'll give you the various subtopics and then we will just go through them as a, as a board. I can tell you a little bit more about what, about what Manager Scalera and I have in mind to try to put some little bit more meat on the bones and then we can just have a discussion about each of them as we go through, if, that's, if that sounds okay. So the first one under government initiatives uh, is to streamline the review process for business district proposals. Under that, there are two items, review the commission structure and procedures, which is in progress, and that report is due back from the commissions to us by mid-September. And the second one is to review the permitted and special use designations, which is also being looked at by the plan commission, and they will be reporting back to us by our first meeting in August. So those two things are already well underway and are being handled by uh, village staff. The next one, as I mentioned, is to update the business sign ordinance. I know that Trustee Hamilton has expressed an interest to take part in that discussion. So it would be my anticipation that the plan commission would obviously include her input as they, as they have that discussion. I also, and again, the, the kind of the, the second tier of folks that are listed here, like the EDC, the Chamber of Commerce and Preservation Commission, those are not exhausted. The Plan Commission <coughs> is charged with reaching out to whomever they see fit. Now, it may be useful as we go through these if the trustees have some specific ideas about other groups that we think should be included, we, could, we can certainly include that in the list when we send it on to the Plan Commission. So as we go through them, if you, if you have alternatives or suggestions about that, you know, please, please speak up about it. So with regard to the updating of the business sign ordinance, are there any questions about the general parameter of that? The next one uh, is to market storefront opportunities. Item A is an outreach to prospective businesses. 
B is produce village marketing materials, including new logo and branding. C is to produce a how-to manual for prospective businesses. The anticipation is that item A, the outreach to prospective businesses, which is already underway, will be handled primarily by Manager Scalera and myself with input from the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Commission. The production of marketing materials, including the new logo and branding, and the production of a how-to manual for prospective businesses. I currently have down here that that would be done by village staff with input from the EDC and the Chamber of Commerce. But as Manager Scalera and I talked more about this today, it seemed to us that it really should be the EDC that should take the lion's share of that work. And, um, and Ms. Beck from CMAP also had a very good suggestion. She, farther down the list, you'll see that there's an item about developing a, a shop local campaign. And she felt that, that we should make sure that that shop local campaign is blended with this kind of broader issue of the logo and branding, because as everybody knows part of branding is repetition. So to the degree that, and of course, the Chamber of Commerce will be involved with all this, so I would anticipate that that, that shop local campaign would be would be folded into the branding and logo effort. Trustee Sussman. I have a question. In the document itself, it, one of the suggestions is to look at the possibility of public art in vacant storefronts. I'm looking at our CMAP. I'd like to suggest that we put that in as something for the EDC and the businesses to discuss. Because I actually think the businesses need to take a lead in attracting other businesses. I think that's an excellent idea. And we had actually uh, Manager Sclair and I actually spoke to the zoo about the possibility, too, of getting some of the, those really nice zoo right. reprints I, of the I zoo I don't mean that we have to create yeah. the art. I just think right. that that's an opportunity that was pointed out in the plan. And that um, attracting businesses frequently is done by businesses themselves, not by us. So I think that's just another great way to do that. You know, in the how-to manual, I would, I, would, uh, I would recommend that the EDC reach out to Roger and Adriana since they're the, the, the latest new business in town and, and often EDC sees it from one side, they may actually, they, well, they obviously see it from the other side, it would be nice to get the fresh input on how, you know, how their labors worked. Yeah, that would be a good idea, to extend that idea, that would, it would be probably good for, for you to reach out to them and just do a, a debriefing with yeah. them in terms of how of their efforts coming into town if they hit if there were snags they hit things that could have been easier so maybe we, we could okay. blend. that's a great idea okay. and everything that's done on uh, the uh, uh, item one the government initiatives and the streamlining will feed into the how-to manual because obviously exactly. if there's changes or um, clarifications that would have to be part of it. And I'm, I'm actually hoping that if, if they can get started on the how-to manual, that that will help us yeah. kind of come exactly. reverse engineer it in a right. way. So, because they'll find the multiple, why it takes four months to go through. By the way, finish. when I was in there on Monday morning, they were um, exclaiming several times about how wonderful it was to work with the village of Riverside and how welcoming we were. And, it's been a long time since I've heard that from, from the business, so I was very glad to hear it. <laughs> it's just because of my so deep ground. So that, that really is all that, I, that we had in terms of the government initiatives. Is there anything else that any of the trustees can think of? Mr. Paul? Um, I don't know if it's me being new to the board or having lived through the last five uh, overviews of, of how we're going to straighten out Riverside and make it better. But one of the things that I, I don't remember hearing a lot of discussion of in the past was having the commissions work together. Um, you know, in your travels, been around to the different commissions early on to promote the idea of the streamlining both their structure and their procedures. Um, I wonder, did you ask them to communicate to one another. Perhaps historical could be communicating with EDC um, and sharing information, or if they need something, they can contact them uh, directly. Or should we consider having a point person from these commissions, perhaps the chair, come before us with an updated version of where they're at, and perhaps they meet amongst themselves, all the commission chairs, 
meet together to to see where we are on this trail. Um, I, I think that you know if historical is going in one direction, EDC is going in another direction. Our common goal is the good of implementing this CMAP plan. I think it's also important for all the commissions to kind of, I don't want to say be corny and say get to know one another, but to understand what each other's doing and work together towards this. And it's, it's, that's funny you should talk about that. I, Doug, uh, Trustee Pollock and I were at the Zoning Board of Appeals last night, and one of the board members there expressed frustration that a lot of times when they're when they're when they're considering considering a variation or something like that, that they would see things that they felt like need to be changed mm -hmm. and it was it was kind of a shock to me because it was it was almost like they felt that there was a wall between the zoning board and the plan commission that they simply couldn't write a memo or send an email or have like you, you're suggesting have the chair call the other chair and say how about doing this so that you know that I think is extraordinarily important okay. that that our com that our commissions start to realize that they're part of an organic Process. Well, even a quarterly super commission. I think that's an excellent Which is idea. what, yeah. basically, what the CMAP was, was all the chairs, pretty much. Just, you know, I, I, I so think maybe we should put that on here, have a quarterly yeah. meeting of the... And that was an interesting, I don't know if it was a slip or not in the CMAP write-up, that our plan commission is actually comprised of the chair. Did you see that? That is actually comprised of the chairs of the different commissions. It's not. It's a completely different group. So I thought that was, I didn't know if that was... Um, uh, kind of subtle way of making a suggestion <laughs> for a super that I did kind of smile when I saw that because we've talked about that, Peter. We've talked about that in the past as, as making that plan commission actually the super commission. Yeah, I, I think it's important that the commissions understand their roles in this adventure. And I'm going to call it an adventure because I think it should be fun. And, uh, you know, I know that historical sometimes wonders what their uh, place in the world is versus preservation's place in the world. And um, if we start down this path of, of, of a major challenge in, in, in the future of this town, it's clear to me that it, it's important to have everybody know what they're doing and, and, and talk to one another. All the commissions speak to one another of this is what we're doing. How can we help you or how can you help us? We need this information. You've got it. Give it to us. Um, share it with us, I should say. Um, so that's just my So thought. maybe maybe what we could do just in terms of organization, under the review commission structure part, we can put having a quarter, quarterly meeting of the, of the chairs. But I, but I and, and we have a number of chairs here. Uh, don't wait for the quarterly meetings. Mm -mm. If you have things that you want to talk about with each other, Pick up the phone or send an email, and because uh, that's that's a wonderful it, that, suggestion. That goes to what you were saying about the speed of this process, about trying to take the simple things that don't cost a tremendous amount of money, that are easy to do, that are what you would consider a no-brainer, and to try and implement them as quickly as possible. Working as a team with all the commissions together, I think it's gonna we're gonna be able to accomplish this. Maybe maybe the first thing to do would be getting a an address book of all the chairs, have all their emails and, and phone numbers, and make sure it's distributed to all the chairs, because I'm sure the chairs don't know each other's emails address, so, you know, I mean, that, that we could do probably tomorrow. I, I see a note being written now that it will be done tomorrow. Uh, and, Mr. President, please. There, there was another interesting point, many interesting points raised in this sec section of the document. We've done an excellent job, and thank you, of talking about what to do to attract new business or what to do about the vacant storefronts. But the other part of it is what do we do to make sure that the businesses that currently are in town are getting the kind of attention and support that they need to stay in town. And um, in the, I can't take credit for this, in the CMAP write-up, they talked about how important that is um, for staff itself to, and I know, Peter, you are in touch with businesses, but a formal way of making sure that there's a connection with current businesses and that the focus not just be on, on attracting new businesses. So I'd like to ask if we could add, add that question to, to this set here. I will say that I do visit, I try to visit all of the businesses. The only business that I won't visit and Dave knows is the funeral home. Sorry. <laughs> And they're doing very well, thank you, Peter. 
people are dying to get in there. <laughs> okay. Um, so current, a formal link with. Yeah, and, th and, there, and later on there is a section on community initiatives, and I think that would be a perfect I think place that to I think that's kind of a staff and yeah. staff function, actually, but okay. 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 Okay, so the next major section is called infrastructure initiatives. Number one is to expand, this is a fairly lengthy one here, expand gateway signage at key intersections and add wayfinding finding techniques to the main streets leading to the CBD. And then underneath that, A is to install gateway signage on First Avenue and Harlem Avenue. B is to research lighting for the Forest Avenue bridge. C is to research a left turn signal and gateway signage on Ogden Avenue at Joliet Avenue by PJ Clems. D is to install wayfinding signage to the CBD, including directional signage for public parking. And E is to improve <coughs> wayfinding techniques for bicycle paths. Currently on the draft, this is assigned to village staff with input from the EDC, the Landscape Advisory Commission, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Riverside Cycling Club. Uh, now what, some of these are big items in terms of the gateway signage, and the EDC has been looking at this for quite a while now. I know that the Forest Avenue Bridge topic has been bounced around the Chamber of Commerce for I don't know how long now. The, the left turn signal uh, at, on Ogden Avenue, this was actually an idea that, that Trustee Ballerine suggested. I mean, that would require IDOT intervention. Uh, I'm hoping that as we have our interactions with them with regard to First Avenue, that we can make some connections there and, and start to press this issue for, for down the line. Is that intersection actually in our town or do we need to work with Lyons? We'd have to work with Lyons and, mm -hmm. and, and Mayor Getty on that. And uh, I've, I've spoken to him briefly about it, but we're gonna speak a little bit more about it. Now, now D, to me, is one of the low-hanging fruit <laughs> topics in terms of wayfinding signage to the CBD, including directional signage for public parking. Now, again, what I have in mind here is something as simple as directing people to our parking lot that we work so hard to build, and yet no one knows it's there. Uh, so a P with an arrow would suffice. But as Manager Sclera mentioned earlier today, really, if we're gonna do this right, we wanna keep this as part of this overall branding yeah. aesthetic mm -hmm. idea. So, and then we would want to blend that in with, with better, the, I mean, our bicycle paths are so wonderful, uh, and yet we have the same green arrow for all of them. So unless you know where you're going, you don't know whether you're on the Palmer route or the Olmsted route or where have you. Uh, uh, so that would, that was, that's, that's what have, that's. Have we looked to communities that are as historic or even more historic as Riverside, how are they doing their signs? And um, pick your favorite historical place that you've ever been to, and what do you remember about how to get around in, this, in that town? Um, and and um, I guess it's kind of as simple as what Joe did with uh, going to Evanston and finding, or was it Evanston about their zoning, when we were talking about the zoning and the, the fees and stuff, finding what other towns are doing. You know? I mean, I know Commissioner Sterner, uh, uh, who's on the Plan Commission, is also an avid cyclist. So he has he has a lot of information to bring with regard to the bicycle mm -hmm. wayfinding techniques. I, I know that I was I was in Oak Park a few, a few weeks ago, and they had really nice. You would actually have a bicycle sign that would say north to a particular landmark. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things that, that that can be considered as well, because we have some remarkable places in this town that people don't know how to find. So, so this, this whole signage, and of course this, this blends in with kind of the governmental review too, but the idea would be that village staff, and again, EDC is going to be busy. <laughs> uh, because this, again, this is a major part of the economic development aspect of give them a reason to come, make it easy to come. So any, any other comments or suggestions about, about this one with regard to signage? I do think that um, the um, signage needs to be looked at comprehensively as part of the branding campaign because it's very easy to have sign pollution, especially in a village this small. 
and uh, uh, I think we want to do something that's very complementary to the historic nature of the village. So I don't think we should, I mean, I think we should move with, with all deliberate speed, but not be so crazy about getting right. something in place that we overlook how important it is to do it right. And, and with that being said, as we look for new signs, we can often get rid of old signs. Yes. I mean, we have so many signs. I mean, if I see one more sign that says stop ahead and I could see the stop sign ahead of me, mm -hmm. it drives me nuts. Um, but we, we can get rid of a lot of signs in this town. Maybe we can put some signs at the center of town that say, really stop at this stop Please sign? Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no Riverside stops. <laughs> okay. Um, next under this general in initiative idea is to make the CBD and village easier to visit and explore, which obviously blends in somewhat with what we were just talking about. Uh, but this, this also is from the, some of the CMAP suggestions, is to improve our sidewalks and crosswalks. I would anticipate that that would be something that our public works department in particular would, would, would pay close attention to. Strengthening our local bicycle facilities, including the possibility of actually having rental bicycles. That would be something that I would think that the Parks and Recreation Board uh, could look into. I, have, I did mention that briefly in our meetings with, with Brookfield Zoo about the possibility of having rental bicycles at the zoo as well, where we could kind of cross-pollinate one another from Riverside to the zoo. So that, that's what that idea. And then to develop a, a parking management strategy, uh, the, this is something that we are going to be facing, and, as, and if all goes well, according to what we're doing starting here tonight, this is gonna become more of a problem about how we handle parking uh, as, our, as our business district begins to, begins to flourish. And that would really, I think, be something that village staff would, would spearhead. And also CMAP brings an enormous amount of resource and, and insight into that. So the idea here we, would be that the plan commission, and this one I actually was, we were talking about this one today, Peter and I, I'm not so sure about whether plan commission is the right lead implementer here. We currently have it down as the plan commission with input from the EDC, the Riverside Cycling Club, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Parks and Recreation Board. But I'm wondering if given kind of the breadth of this, if perhaps that village staff might not be the proper lead implementer for, for this particular topic. I was looking at that because certainly preservation and floss should be involved in this kind of work as well. So to your point, Ben, it's really the whole, it, many of the institutions in this village. So we'll have staff as being lead, okay. Now the next one, uh, I think is an especially fun and exciting one. Um, and that's to create a visitor center in the train station with wayfinding information, a business directory, a map, a history of Riverside display. And right now what we have is the EDC would take the lead in this effort with input from the Chamber of Commerce, the Historical Commission, and FLOSS. I have heard repeatedly over the years that people, and stories about people getting off the train and then just kind of looking around kind of a bewildered state, not knowing where to go. And we have this, I mean, it's, it's a sad thing that, that, that we lost Solomici as, as a local business. However, the space that they left behind is an optimal space for this kind, for this kind of, of enterprise. And we have our historical chairperson. Yes, please, please, question. please, step up, please. Hi, my name is Judith Sizek. I'm chair of the Riverside Historical Commission. And I have a question about turning the train station into a visitor center. Uh, based upon the number of hours it's open and when it's open, and maybe there's been arrangements made, but it's my understanding the station master is there until 1 o'clock during weekdays, and then the train station is closed and then it's closed on weekdays. You can't buy tickets. On weekends. On weekends, thank you. And I was wondering if there were any arrangements made to keep the train station open. It doesn't make sense to have a visitor center if you can't access you can't it on weekends. Yeah. And that will, that, will, that will be part of what the EDC has to Oh, OK. I was just wondering then, if some arrangements had already been made. No, not yet. OK. But, but that's obviously something that we're aware of that, okay. that will have to be addressed to actually get people. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, 
on the, on the, the good side is we have a visitor center, the bad side. It's like Catch-22. When, when can I say when he's, when he's not here is when you can say it. Right. So point well taken. So anything else about, the, about is that? Is there a way to bring RB students into this mix somewhere? I'm not sure under which one it would be most appropriate, but it'd be nice if we could use all of our resources in town and we have the high school and if they could be involved in, I was thinking maybe with the visitor center would be appropriate, but maybe somewhere else, like how they did the artwork on the arcade building before, something to bring them in. Um, well, that's a great idea. I think that's, that's to get the schools involved, particularly yeah. at all levels would be great. <clears throat> Chairperson, please. Well, the Historical Commission has been lobbying to have the water tower be the center of the, well, the center of Riverside and be the visitor center. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, we get a lot of RB students in the museum, and the Historical Commission has been doing this for 10 years, but lobbying to have the water tower turned into the visitor center and the museum. So that's my answer to that. I mean, I think we should all we should always have that in mind. Both I mean, both 208 and 96. Mm -hmm. Anytime we can involve our kids, right. this, this is going to be their village. So I think we should, you know, all the commissions as they look at these various tasks should keep that in mind about a place for that. You know, with regard to, and we'll talk about the water tower in a minute, because um, that's on that's on the list. the The opportunity for the the, the train station, however, <coughs> is, this is something we could do now. I mean, it would be relatively straightforward, if, assuming we can keep the thing open so people can get in. But it would be very straightforward to go in there, do the walls, have, have the, the historical commission put together a kind of a history of Riverside display, have map, maps in there, have directional information there to our businesses. Uh, it would be something that, that we could do in fairly short order while we explore down the line the possibility of optional uses for the the water tower or the museum campus over there. So that's and, kind of- And possibly have it in a sense where <clears throat> during the operating hours of the station, it, it would be something inside, but would there be something available outside should the station be closed and someone gets off the train at a late hour and it's lost? Or? Well, there is, that, there is that really nice little section of the mm -hmm. train station where, that you used to use to access the tunnel. That, that has often been talked about as a possibility of like a kiosk area in there the only, the only concerns I've really heard raised over the years about that would be vandalism and theft for the right. things that you had in there. But it could, it may be well be that if something as simple as an encased sign or an encased map in that location could offer some guidance if in case the train station, the, in, the interior would happen to be closed. Because that's a really nice space, that little, that little mm -hmm. outdoor space there. So that would be something that, that we could look at as well. So anything else on, on that one? Now the next one is, uh, is, a, is another one of these exciting ones, but in many ways may be one of the most complicated and require the most study of, of a number of the ones that are on here. And that is to increase the re recreational connections to, to the riverfront. Now, we have been focusing on the CBD proper with regard to Burlington, Quincy, the business districts. Uh, but I think that we do ourselves a disservice if we don't recognize the greater draw that we have as a village that can bring people in and then feed that business community. So that's where this one comes from. And the first, the first idea is to establish an Indian Gardens natural area. And this natural area, as part of this natural area, we would extend the walking path that is currently in Indian Gardens and actually extend it up to, to the dam or where the dam used to be. We would emphasize our Native American background, which is something I think that we don't do enough of in, in our village. And also the historical importance of the, of the portage, and not only the portage, but the general geographical significance of this area. I mean, for example, a lot of folks probably don't know that Riverside Road is our very own A1A. Riverside Road is a beach road. Riverside Road was the beach of Old Lake Chicago some 14,000 years ago. Um, and they, this, that's why part of our town has a sand substrate. That's why part of our town has a clay substrate. 
So, so these, these are the kind of things that could feed into this. Also to emphasize the ecological importance of the Hoffman and Fairbank Dam restoration project. I've seen a lot of people out there at that bridge looking at that project and it's, it's, a, it's an enormous success. The ecological impact of, of that project already has been very successful. So it seems to me that there's an educational, and tourism is probably too strong a word, but a draw to bring people here to see how it can be done, how it can be done right. This is where the idea of, the, of establishing the canoe and kayak livery uh, comes in. I suggest here the possibility of using the scout cabin. Uh, Ms. Beck had a good point that if we want to try to feed the downtown, maybe the Swan Pond area would be a better place for that. Again, I don't even know if this is feasible or economically <coughs> possible, but this, is, this would be what the lead implementer had to look at. And if we were able to develop that area, the possibility of using the uh, scout cabin as a nature center for uh, to kind of be the, the focal point of this broader uh, natural area. So that's number A. Uh, B would be to evaluate the river bank behind the police station and the former youth center for a walking path. I think one of the goals many of us have for the future would be to have an actual walking path along the length of our river through our town. The, and there is a possibility to explore that behind those existing buildings now. There's, there's actually kind of a two-tiered reinforcing wall back there. So the idea would be to get back there and see if, it, if, it's, if it's feasible for us to actually turn that into some kind of, of walking path. And then the third one uh, is to open up the river views and to support shoreline habitat restoration. This, again, is something where we need the experts. This is where we would have to have people from FLOSS, from the LAC, to come in and to guide us. So with regard to this overarching idea of increasing recreational connections to the riverfront, we have down here that the Parks and Recreation Board would be the lead implementer with input from the LAC, the Historical Commission, and FLOSS. Uh, we have Melinda Pruitt-Jones is here tonight, the Executive Director of Chicago Wilderness. I su suspect that something of this magnitude would extend beyond our village and would require also regional outreach and regional connections as well for the expertise necessary to do something like that. Please. I just have a couple of questions. Please. One, Peter, may not fit in here. You may know the answer. Uh, but it's related to Swan Pond. Now that Swan Pond is virtually fixed, right, unless there's an ice blockage, are we going to be reseeding it, or is that the sort of thing that belongs on this list? Well, um, as, part and, of the, uh, as part of the project, um, uh -huh. there is still a two-year maintenance oh, okay. um, with the Army Corps. Um, one of the things that the village is looking into is whether or not the turf area applies under that agreement, or if the two-year maintenance was primarily for the culvert, um, the check valve, yep. and, and um, any of the uh, invasive species removed along the riverbank. Um, in the last few weeks, the turf has kind of started to take. Um, so right now, the Army Corps is kind of evaluating whether or not it, it, it will come. And if not, then that is something that probably the board will have to decide on whether or not we want to precede it or, or how, what, what type of uses are we planning to put down there and what type of um, turf would we need in order to sustain those activities. Thanks. Then another, it's, it's just a comment based really on, on the path on in Swan Pond. Um, and I'm sure that people will look at it, Susan. Then it's also about the multi-use of these areas. So when we create a path, a narrow path, we have bikers and we have walkers. And I just think it would be an interesting discussion. Peter and I have talked about this. That's why he's smiling. Um, it would be an interesting discussion to talk about the changing use of our parks. Um, and particularly as we look at what's happening with a paved section of Swan Pond, it's changed. So just as kind of something to... With the new, um, pave, with the new pavement in place, um, it is being um, used more so than, than the, the stone-based path or, and parts of it were just man-made path. Um, so it is being utilized. Um, there are a lot more runners, bikers, just people walking and looking at the river. So it, it, the goal of bringing people to that area has worked. Right. Um, 
And so for me, one of the things that I think is part of the review, um, and it's been talked about at the EDC, is the width of the path. Right, that's what I was actually referring to as we think about these connectors and the, and the material of the path. Right. right. Then I just have one more, Thanks. a general question under the infrastructure, not under this particular section, but when we talk about infrastructure initiatives, um, for Riverside, and if we think about the new parking lot, we've talked a lot about green structures and, and making, who we, making green infrastructure a part of who we are as a part of our mission. And it was alluded to, well, it was actually mentioned in the CMAP plan in terms of zoning, actually, or what we require as we develop, if we were to develop parts of the CBD. But I wonder if if there's a section on, I mean, I wonder if that's enough. I, it's a question for the board or for the LAC or perhaps to get residents such as um, Ms. Pruitt Jones's input on whether it's a strong, we, we don't have anything specifically in here about that and whether we actually need to say something based on the recommendations of the CMAP document or whether it's really worth putting um, a number there. So it would be number, in this case, it would be number five, which says, I don't know, could say anything as such as make sure everything we do, we consider the green ramifications or evaluate, it could be stronger than that, which is be proactive in changing our codes in, in talking to residents and talking, in this case it's a CBD, but everything we should do, we do, we should be asking that question. And I'd just like to see that brought out more. I Melinda, I don't know, I know you've yeah. thought about this also. And, and to Jean's point, I'd like, you know, if we're talking about this trail, um, I don't know whose idea it was to have blacktop in, in such a narrow uh, path through the Swan Pond area, but I'd like to see the trails be similar in material um, and tell the same story and be the same width. And, and uh, um, this trail system has been kicked around and talked about for years and years and and. Uh, looking out in the audience, I can see uh, former trustee Buttermer. Um, it, it goes way back um, when we, uh, there was an iced tea grant, um, which is now this trail that has come through and gone all the way out um, to, uh, to the western suburbs. Um, we have the, the ability to put this trail in from, if you can think, from the swim club all the way around to the dam. And it can be done in an invasive way through the woods, um, identifying trees that probably are invasive species that need to be removed. Um, and it, the trail does not have to be straight. It can wind, it should wind. Um, it should be interesting, it should have elevation change. Uh, and it can be hidden from the street. And I know there's a lot of people in town that disagree with that, but I, I challenge them to walk that area and see that, and, and that can be done. But whatever we do, and to Gene's point about keeping it green, I'd like to keep it all looking the same and not have different materials and different paths. Um, going behind uh, the library, the village hall, and um, the rec center, um, and tying into the swinging bridge, we're going to need the permission of the township that is their bridge, um, and we'll need to have their cooperation in this adventure as well. So um, I just wanted to add that. I, I just have a, excuse Please. me, a follow-up suggestion. Please. I know we're not supposed to be working the issues here. I, I recognize okay. that. Perhaps, Mr. Bailey, you're hiding from me, maybe for good reason, <laughs> um, and Public Works hasn't been mentioned yet. Maybe this is something that Ed, might want to think about, because I know he thinks a lot, I am bragging about well, you, um, that you do think a lot about green infrastructure and how to move the village forward with this. Right. Maybe we could just add you know, I think that's a number time, five, yeah. Ed Bailey. So that, so that's a sustainable, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, and I, anytime, and, Ed, you can and I, uh, any time for that. And it seems to me, and, and of course in my imagination, the, the whole idea of sustainability, especially, especially sustainable infrastructure, since that's right. so much that's of, what what we, of what we have some control over. That should be part of our branding now. But maybe we could just I say think, that. I think we should. And, so and as an number five, we would just say, say yeah. something to the effect of sustainability should be a major factor in all considerations. Right, and then make sure Ed's name is there. And, and, and make sure Ed's name is there. I just, again, I, cause I, not to get to dive too deep into the, to the minutiae here, but just to, to kind of, because 
Chair, Chairperson Leander's here from Parks and Rec, and they're going to be kind of overseeing this. I have had some preliminary discussions with, with, with Director Bailey and with our, our village forester. And we have to be careful when we start talking about creating hiking paths or walking paths, because if you start getting them too formalized, now you have maintenance issues, you have liability issues. So this will, you know, to your point, Trustee Foley, this is going to be something that has to be carefully thought through in terms of what nature of path mm -hmm. are we are we really talking about here? And there's all different kinds right. of paths. Right. So this yeah. this will be part of the. But we have to know that this path will be used and it will be a multi-use path. You know, um, unless we want more signs saying no bikes or, you know, uh, running only or you know. So. It'd be nice to have a Riverside path through Riverside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mr. President. Please. Please, Mr. Would, would it be okay to make some of course, please yeah. do. Yeah, please do. Right now. You're in hiding back there, that's okay. Hearing, hearing what's been said in terms of involving RB, paths, wayfinding from our streets to our way around town, all of those things, I think what Mike Foley was saying, they also apply to paths as, as minimal intrusively as they can possibly be. Uh, I have three minutes of comments, is that okay? Sure. <clears throat> Almost two decades ago, several of us came to the village and we described a partnership made up of volunteers, the village, the rec department, and the women's, uh, Riverside Junior Women's Charity. The group grew and we built an ice rink for the community. Friendships and memories also grew and the Big Chill crew and the partners will soon build the 18th annual ice rink. Last year, R&B's athletic director asked to create a fundraiser for R&B sports. Again, a few volunteers came to the village, to the rec department, and discussed a partnership. We planned the Bulldog River Run with several major components. The removal of the dams and the improvements in Swan Pond brought focus to the river, but it was too soon to use. The Village of Riverside, Cook County Forest Preserve District, and the township were partners and they were great. The Forest Preserve District cleared a natural path on the far bank. The township helped celebrate with the historic suspension bridge. The village registered the runners, pruned, mowed, safeguarded, and more. I can't thank the village enough for the way they extended themselves for RB's fundraising run. Now, I've personally been known to be very critical of RB's referendum techniques <laughs> and some of their facilities but I'm here to say I believe they're headed in a good direction. However, I'm disappointed it's not with all the new athletic facilities being the center of the community as was promised, especially since Riverside is long on kids and short on facilities. On a positive note, last Monday, both staffs of the village and the high school met to brainstorm mutual benefits of working more closely. Then on Tuesday at the Board of Education meeting, Dr. Skinkus reported that they are close to a solution to the four-year natatorium problems. For your information, they've embraced the community's involvement over the swim air quality issues, and they're about to resolve those issues. I'm here tonight to say thanks to the village for the help in 2012 and to support our bees giving back in 2013. Here's my point. One goal last year and for this year's run is that it be off-road. We believe that's more fun and it's healthier. It's more natural. It also avoids the cost and inconvenience of street and driveway closings. In addition to the enjoyment of the renewed natural path and beautiful suspension bridge, there's also a simple connection that could be made to Swan Pond. I call that the missing link, and it's been referred to this evening. It runs adjacent to the river, right behind these buildings. It's out of sight, it's overgrown. Frankly, it's been neglected since most of us were kids. 
but it has good sight lines. It offers phenomenal views of the bridge, the river, the forest, Swan Pond, and the architectural details of these wonderful landmark buildings. Like so many volunteers who trim overgrown sections of the riverbank, we volunteer to clean up this tiny strip of land. Consider it part of RB's thank you to Riverside and hopefully the furtherance of a good relationship. I promise you that if you grant that permission, we will make this tiny strip of land usable, attractive, and safe. In other words, we'll provide the missing link so more people can experience your vision as you develop it with meetings like this evening. I'm here to seek your approval. It's a, it's a, it's a short part of piece of land. I'm not proposing that it be developed as this type of trail or that type of trail. I'm proposing that it be clean, that it give you a clean canvas to work on your vision for what that ought to have a long range use for. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, does anybody have any comments about? I, I'd like to speak to that because I, I, I agree with uh, what Mr. Buttermer had said about the sight lines. Um, I think that's going to give us a better idea of what we want to do looking down here with the, uh, the former rec center and what that all is all about. And <clears throat> if this path is being used and getting used frequently and we decide to do something with the rec center as far as selling it, removing it, redeveloping it, um, the path has to remain and work in conjunction with the new development of the rec center if that's you know jumping to phase two so i mean i think it's certainly something that should be considered i don't think I it's one question please just a question can i please. identify the area please i'm just asking can i identify the area that he's mentioning swan pond's the biggest oh where, where, so where he's talking about is, is is directly behind the police station and the the former youth center and the li and the library and the library it's okay. that it's that that strip right down through there Perfect. Thank you. I, mean, I mean that's not the purpose of tonight it's it, it, the purpose of tonight is to not to not drive down to to be given approval of particular projects. This is something that I that the Parks and Rec Board is charged with looking at in, in, in conjunction with staff and developing the idea and then bringing it back to us. But it's, I don't think it's something you want to, I'd rather not get distracted with a particular issue as we're trying to, to move through. Any other comments about that? Okay, thank you, Jerry. Um, the next, general topic is uh, community initiatives. And the first one, to go back to, yes, Mr. Bailey, please. Oh, please. Um, I, I see think, you behind the camera person, the sorry. Um, I spent a lot of time in um, Swan Pond recently, just walking and um, kind of getting a feel. And I can definitely tell um, from walking before um, the project, um, there's a lot more use uh, from different times of the year. I, there's a lot more use now. It, um, it's, it's really pretty. It's really interesting um, to walk, and um, it's beautiful how it curves. Um, I do know that there has been, um, there's, believe it or not, um, this whole blacktop thing has been controversial. Everybody, a lot of people talk about it. Um, so, and people hate it. People ask why. Um, and so if, I'm, I'm kind of confused if the village board, if you don't like the blacktop, let, let's say, and you don't like, the, is, is that something that, that Katie needs to put on the agenda? Um, like we need to figure something else out? Or if this, who makes that judgment, that decision? Like, because um, we take input from the public, of course, and I'm, like I said, I've been down there a lot lately. Um, but, you know, obviously, there's a lot of people that don't like the blacktop. And so, you know, that's kind of thing, is that something we put on the agenda? Is that something that we try to amend? Is that something we, we find other ways? Um, just, just, just to clarify, just so we know 
kind of where we stand as far as, because I know, you know, this whole evening, you know, um, you know, you hold the purse strings, but you've also given responsibilities to the commission, certain th responsibilities to the commission. So um, I just kind of wanted to clarify what, well, if, that, if those are directives it, or if it's just, or what not. Well, as you know, the, after the flood, we had major damage down there. And Manager Scalera did explore the idea, the possibility. I mean, I have to say I'm one of the folks who is not fond of the asphalt path. Just to widen the section uh, was in the range of $47,000. So I would say at this point, we have the path completed by the Army Corps. Uh, it remains to be seen what kind of longevity an, as an asphalt path has. My, and, and Manager Square can chime in if he disagrees, but my, my suggestion at this point would be to not, for the Parks and Rec Board, to not try to tackle that issue. Uh, because you're talking a lot of money to try to take that path out at this point and put something else in. Uh, I, would, I would leave that be and concentrate on the items that the board is talking about tonight. That would be that would be my response to that. What are the trustees or village manager? I agree. I, I would agree too. That was a part of the negotiation with the Army Corps of Engineers and the cost balancing right. of getting all the work, all that fabulous work that was done in Swan Pond. So uh, until we actually need to do something about it, um, or there's a huge well, including a huge maintenance issue, that would be my preference. Okay. So one last thing to do. Katie, is that? We like we like public opinion, like because um, even though all of the the uh, board members are really active in the community with our kids and things, and so we hear residents, we hear feedback, but we don't all hear everything. So, um, but I, I was I've heard about the blacktop at least five times this week. So, but so I just kind of wanted to know, you know, so we could focus and we could get our agenda and kind of know. She kind of knows which way to go. So I got it. Thank you. Okay. If someone wants to make a big donation so that we can put in a green pathway, we'll be more than happy. Exactly. Or if the board tries to solicit money, fix it. That would be good, right? I, I guess what I would add is we did add a number five here where we're talking about um, sustainable projects. And this would be in speak taking what Trustee Foley mentioned, examining all of the paths and, and coming up with a path material that we can be consistent. And then when the time comes for Swan Pond, if we have that in place, then you kind of, you know what material you're, you will be using and then, then that will then allow the village or staff to start putting it into your CIP at a certain point down the road where we can then the board can, de can decide, okay, we, can, we know that this is an expenditure coming down the road, we know what path material we'll be using, and it's something that we, we support. Okay, great. Thank you, that's all. Thanks, Susan. So next up is the, and we're getting toward the end here, folks. Next up is the uh, community initiatives. Number one is the Shop Local campaign, which we had spoken about earlier. That would obviously be an interaction between the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Commission, so that I am confident that, that would and proceed. That's apace. actually beyond. That's every business in town, right? Exactly. That's just mm -hmm. not the CBD. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Right. And 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 really, it's every resident. Right. In town. Right. Uh, I mean, if I, if I don't don't get me started. If you want if you want a vibrant business community, <laughs> shop here. Mm -hmm. That helps. Can, can I, I, sorry, I just have a question about this. So when we first started about uh, talking about this, you talked about this is your idea or you and Pete, your, your and Peter's idea of priorities. Mm -hmm. It just, I, my opinion is this shop local campaign is really, um, really an important, at least in my opinion, an important well, priority to I'm move. I'm glad you said that. I and I would like to see it. market storefront opportunities. Well, I just. Um, I mean, really, my, I'm glad because it's it's a list. Yeah, I know that's that. I know it's not three dimensional. And really, the, the concept is we have the government initiatives, the infrastructure. Right. That's why I was asking. And the community initiatives. Our thought is really those are parallel tracks. Okay, that helps. Thanks. So. That's it. 
these things should all be yep. going apace, if that makes sense. I'm old fashioned, I still make lists. <laughs> Sorry. Number two is to support current and additional community events. Under this is a consideration of perhaps expanding staff support of community events to increase the number of community events. I mean, we just heard uh, you know, a description of the extraordinary turnout for July 3rd. And number C is to renovate the Blue Star Memorial. Th this, is, this is kind of, a, in some ways, an, an aside. But this is something that I've been talking about with uh, Coach Sisolak, Tom Sisolak, for several years now. The Blue Star Memorial is the Veterans Memorial out by the flagpole. It is, it, it is in disrepair. I'm sad to say that some of the stones on which the fallen's names are listed have actually sunk into the ground so that those names are now underground. I find that personally intolerable. They deserve to be seen. They deserve to be honored. So the idea here would be to do a general renovation of that area. In speaking with, with Tom Sisolak, I, I firmly believe this is something that could be done on a volunteer and fundraising financed basis. I think there would be enough support in this village to properly honor our fallen veterans that we, this is something that we could accomplish. But it would be under this general concept of, of supporting community events. And, and we have, as the lead implementers here, the village board and village staff with input from the various relevant community organizations. So that's, that's, what, that's just a brief description of what that item would be. And, and if, if Past President Wyaduck could answer this question. Isn't, wasn't the Blue Star Memorial originally put there by the Garden Club? Yes. Uh, 10, 15, 10 years ago, something like that? So yeah, they, they it should. something to do with the National Garden, uh, Garden Club or something like that. Get more information. So they should be a major, a, a named player in this Blue Star Memorial issue. So. Who puts together the Memorial Day? Um, Tom Sisolak has been doing it for okay. years, really on his, on his own. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was a beautiful, That would beautiful. make a great Eagle Scout project, too. That's a very good Very idea. good. Excellent. Because they raise funds for that. Absolutely. That would be a great that's idea. That's a great idea. It's a small enough area. <coughs> and just, just for clarification, the Girl Scouts do the Eagle Scout projects, too. They call it something different. Well, I don't know what they call it. Gold Scouts Gold or something. Whatever. Yeah. But a good yeah. scout. Good scout. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Please. Yes, please. Yes, well, I'm quite excited about all of this. And since you brought up the Blue Star Memorial, um, in my mind, it brought up other historical markers in Riverside. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had like a consistency in how we present uh, historical information around Riverside. You were talking about the nature paths and the walks. Um, I know Lyons has um, like a marker that explains the Hoffman Dam. And uh, you have been talking about our Native American heritage here as well as the portage. Maybe consider along the paths historical markers talking about our Native American heritage or uh, the portage. Uh, I'm just thinking about making all of it like consistent and how we do it in, in, in terms of historical markers around and memorials around Riverside. That's a great idea. And I think that goes back to the question that if all the chair people, persons, spoke to each other, as recreation would talk about what they're doing through their parks and what they want to do at the scout cabin and nature center, they would obviously inter intermingle with the historical society to find out what kind of information you have. You have all this information on all these different things. Well, we would love that, to share it. That, that, that other people don't have, and, and by, by people talking, then. then yeah, well, we would so love to share it and so, see it, something about historical markers talking about the historical significance of our side. It would be fabulous. That's wonderful. Thank you. 
Next up is an idea, a general idea to promote tourism, which is really, in general, what we've been talking about in one way or another all night. One first up would be to leverage the train access to and from Chicago. Also to increase walking and bicycle tours to support bed and breakfast establishments. The last one, I think, is uh, of special interest to me, I have to say. And then also to emphasize the riverfront, natural beauty, and natural history, which really goes to exactly the things we were talking about a little bit ago about with regard to infrastructure uh, initiatives. And then to also research the renovation of the water tower for adaptive reuse. So pegged here is our need to lead implementer would be the Economic Development Commission with input from the Plan Commission, the Historical Commission, FLOSS, and the Riverside Cycling Club. And this, this one is especially important, and again, to harken back to what Trustee Ballerin was saying about, about the July 3rd. As we move forward, and this is really an historical aspect to our, of why we're here, that train station is central to our entire being here in Riverside. And it's a beautiful building, and it seems to me if we could start to work in this visitor center idea and start to capitalize on the connection we have to the city, that could be something that could really help springboard a lot of this. 11 minutes. We're 11 minutes from, from downtown Chicago. The idea of a business person flying into Midway, coming, staying in a nice bed and breakfast here in Riverside, eating at our restaurants, hopping on the train, going downtown, doing his or her business, coming back at the end of the day. This, that is in keeping with the whole concept and the idea that the Riverside Improvement Company had when they developed this place. And so that's, this is kind of an overarching theme that I think the EDC can latch on to and, and make headway with. Please, please, absolutely. Um, I'm just wondering if the village is somehow partnering with the Office of Illinois Tourism to have like posters at Midway, at O'Hare, um, saying visit, visit Riverside, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's amazing what we have here. Our whole village is a historic landmark. We have the most preeminent architects represented in this village. And I'm just wondering if the village has partnered with the Illinois Department of Tourism to get signage out, brochures out, at, at tourism offices in downtown Chicago, downstate. The, the village is a member of the Visit Oak Park Tourism Bureau, which is um, kind of like the regional um, center for this area. And the, through the Visit Oak Park Bureau, they do have um, us included in their handbook, which is located at O'Hare, Midway, oh, okay. um, many of the hotels in the downtown area. <laughs> but they also um, have information separate from the booklet that they were a part of. Whenever we provide them any sort of pamphlets that they disseminate to their various locations and include <coughs> in those spots. Okay. And I also had a question about uh, CGI Productions. Is a video being made on Riverside? The village is currently um, working with a production company to possibly okay. create a community video. But it's um, not in progress yet, or? It, it's, um, we're, we're kind of in the script development phase, so they haven't gone out and done any shots of the village okay. or interviews or anything like that. Because I'm wondering if uh, there's a time frame for the completion of that video with the opening of the train station as a visitor center and whether that video could possibly be shown in the train station. I, I don't have a timeline or a oh, completion right. date for the video. Um, um, because the Historical Commission does have a flat screen television in the Westwell House that's rarely used. We'd be happy to donate it to the train station if you want to run that. Uh, well, we actually do have television screens in the train station oh, okay. where we run right now um, as part of a partnership with Metro rail safety videos. Okay. Um, so it, once the video is complete, there is a way for us to just run it okay. with the TVs. But I thank you for the offer. If you want to donate it, uh, I know a space here in the Village Hall, I can use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
especially during baseball season. <laughs> yeah. um, with the promoterism, we just the research, the renovation of the water tower uh, for adaptive reuse. I, I, you know, I, you have every you have every player there except the player that's actually in the water tower right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Good point. So I think the recreation has to be part of this because, you know, nothing really moves out of there until they find a home. Right. Um, and, you know, right now, then, you know. Right. Um, sorry, I feel like. That's okay. That's, that's why we're here. I'm, I'm a little piggy tonight because I'm taking up so much time. But, um, uh, the commission has asked me to ask the board what the status is on our recommendation to look into opening up the observation deck of the water tower, making Riverside a point of destination for visitors. Um, <clears throat> as most of you know, the commission uh, did have a feasibility, feasibility study done on opening up uh, the observation deck. And we're sort of in limbo, wondering how the village, how the board wants us to proceed. I, I haven't seen that haven't feasibility seen study presented to us. Uh, we had it performed by uh, Till Gustafson, uh, who are historic Nobody, preservation but architects. But in terms of presenting it to the board, have you presented it to the board? Uh, no, we have. We, we don't know how to proceed at this point. And ask, ask us to come present. Okay, we would like to <laughs> we would like to propose that we did have a feasibility study done. Do you have so. a cost attached to that also? Pardon me. Do you have a cost attached to that also? No. At one point, uh, we had Bob Carrer do his conception okay, of Bob, Bob Carrer can turn a water tower into an observation deck. Um, for us to really take that seriously, we need to know whether we're talking a hundred thousand oh, no, dollars or whether we're talking, we're talking million. about a hundred million dollars. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, I've 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 been in the water tower. Um, to get to the top of that water tower is a, is a, is a feat. Um, yes, it is. For, for an able person um, to make that ADA accessible and put an elevator in there and to do all what you're talking about. If you're going to supply us with a feasibility study, I wouldn't even, I mean, is it feasible? Yeah, anything's feasible. It, but at what cost? So, um, so along with the feasibility study, we need some estimate. Of cost. Okay. Uh, well, since since the water tower is owned by the village, and we're the commission wonders whether we suggest a cost estimate being done that be done by the village, if, or the commission go forward and uh, use monies from its own coffers to have a cost estimate done. I, I, if I may, I, I would suggest that, that that that's not a discussion for tonight. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you if, I mean, if you would like to come and, and present what you have to us and suggest along the lines of what you just said, I would suggest that you speak with Mr. Scalera and get on our agenda for a future okay, meeting. Fine. When, we, we, act, when we, we can actually, when we can actually when we can actually focus on it and give it the attention. That it's okay, we just didn't know how to proceed. Right. So I thank you for the answer. So as far as what we worked on, that was really all we had for what we're calling phase one. Is there anything that anyone else can suggest? Uh, I will just briefly touch on the phase two items, these are things down the road. One would be I'm sorry. To, I do have a couple please. of questions under promote tourism. There were strong recommendations in the CMAP study about looking at our crosswalks whether they're in the right position or not. Is that just a part of the ongoing work we do, Peter? Um, I don't mean necessarily about um, narrowing the expanse from the train station south, but in general, where are the crosswalks? Yeah, I, I, Isn't that I, part, I, of, uh, yeah, part of the infrastructure, the infrastructure okay. initiatives? Oh, OK. Is that would, in there? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm making it easier. To Sorry, do I missed that. OK, so thanks. OK. So with regard to the big ticket items, so to speak, one would be to improve our CBD streetscape, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, one would be to improve the facades, to perhaps some kind of have some kind of facade program to help people up, update and beautify their facades. Also, to and this is something suggested by uh, Trustee Pollock, would be to improve our maintenance review 
and reg regulation in our, in our business districts. Number two would be to improve the trainscape. As most folks know, we're one of the unusual communities that has the back of our buildings back up to the train instead of the front of our buildings, which has created a problem over the year that people see the backs of our buildings. And then number three would be to determine the highest and best use of the former, former use center property. And I would draw attention to, to the nature of that language, to determine the highest and best use of the former youth center property. Uh, I'm of the opinion that over time we have, we have kind of fallen into a trap of, of, of thinking that once a youth center, always a youth center. Uh, that is, as, as Mr. Buttermer talked about earlier with regard, regard to sight lines, that is one of the premier spots in this entire village by the, by the swimming bridge, right on the river. It's a jewel. So as we when down the road when we get to that point, and I suspect of all the things that we're talking about tonight, if there was a referendum item on this list, it would be with regard to redeveloping that property because we're talking a lot of money. And it would require a lot of, of input from our residents to determine what we really believe is the proper and best use of that property. But to go back for just a second to, to the, the, the streetscape idea, I just I want to give some information to, to the residents in general who might not have seen this in the, the packet or whatever. We currently have, the village currently has a uh, funding from the surface transportation program for resurfacing Burlington from Harlem to Long Common. And that project is supposed to be done in 2014. In the last week to 10 days, we were made aware that there is also a potential for combining that STP funding with an Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program grant that would allow us to do streetscape renovations in our central business district on Burlington at the same time. That's the good news. The bad news is that the application for this grant is due August 12th. Uh, Manager Scalera and Director Bailey and I have met with Burke Engineering and a company called Conservation Design Forum to discuss the, the necessary steps to submit the application for the ITEP grant. We were joined in these discussions by Charles Peipel, who is the chairman of the Preservation Commission, Paul Sterner, who is a plan commissioner and also a, a, an architect of some renown, and Tom Lufer, who is our new chair of the Economic Development Commission and a landscape architect. They sat in with us in, in these discussions. All that's necessary at this point in time is a general idea, a general plan to get the grant application in. So at this point, the village is under no obligation, is under no obligation for cost, for a design, a specific idea. All we have to do is give them something with the, with the associated numbers so that we can get the grant process underway. If the grant were to be awarded, at that point, a much more detailed plan would be worked out with, with uh, Burke and any kind of design consultant that, that we felt was required to get an appropriate plan. And certainly, it would bring in major part would be the sustainable aspect of sustainable infrastructure. So I just want to alert everyone that that, that, that is going on. Uh, did, did you want to add anything in terms of the, the nuts and bolts about how this is being done? Or no, I mean, you touched pretty much it. Yeah. it. So, so that, that's an opportunity. If, I mean, who knows? We might be able to do some things in phase two sooner than, than we thought possible. But uh, we'll keep everybody posted as, as the grant application is prepared and submitted. So that is all that we had for this consideration. Does, does, do any of the trustees or anybody in, in, that's visiting, does anybody have anything else they would like to, to add to this discussion? If residents have suggestions or things that they'd like to see done, how do you want that to be communicated? Should they communicate with the commissions that are in charge of these things? Should they communicate with the village manager? With it would probably make more sense for them to, to contact you, right? And then you can redirect it to the appropriate commission. So they can, they can email our village manager through the village website. Okay. Or, as always, any resident can, can contact anybody up here if they have suggestions about this or anything else. 
and, and we'll make sure it gets to the to the right place. But this is a time that if people have ideas or things that they would like to yes. see included, for them to make sure that they bring it up so that, that we don't later say, why did we do this? Now, before going back, we, what we didn't do as we went through this tonight was the time issue about when we, when we want preliminary reports back from the commissions on, on these various items. Do you, do you think it's sensible to give just a common date for a preliminary report back from the commissions? I think what we're, what we're anticipating doing now that we're finished with, with the discussion is we will, we will basically, and when I say we, I mean staff and I will, will create kind of a charge memo to be sent to the various commissions that based on our conversation tonight, here are the things that we would like you to look into. And we could ask them to give us a preliminary report back when. What, what do you think? Should we make it, should we do something like, uh, you know, every 30 days? I mean, or, or 60 days or, or, or something, you know, whether, whether it be today is July 11th, September 15th, something like that. A, a specific date. What, for what, just an update or Just for an update, how far they've gotten. I, um, I actually worth, think that maybe a, a one way to do it, sorry, Ellen, did okay. that would be to um, do that and at that meeting in either 30 or 60 days say, tell us when you're gonna have the work done. Sure. And, that's, and agree that's to that or not. To say was, what I would like to see is from them, for them to give us a timeline right. of sure. when they can even address these and then when they would, so if they could come back to us by whatever date it is with a timeline for these different things that are under their purview. They, there's no reason that they should, that the commissions couldn't get back to us after their next meeting. So in 30 or 45 days or whatever would, account for the next meeting of the commissions and that could be unless there's something really else that takes well, precedence on the agenda they could get back to us with a date well not to put anybody too much on the spot <laughs> chair chairperson leander and chairperson luffer uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, the only, I guess the only thing I'm, I'm a little concerned about with regard to something as early as like early September is we are in the middle of summer and people are going to be going on vacations and things like that. I, 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 like, I, I want to give, a, add to that. I wanna give a realistic. Hey, Ben, you didn't want to postpone this too long. We want to get going. Okay, <laughs> well, give me a date. I'll write it down. We've given them the task to streamline themselves and to come back to us mid-September. Should we not wait to see how they've streamlined themselves before we give them a deadline for another task? You know, I, I'm not so sure about that because the, because really the, the in, in, in general terms, the ordinance review, the establishing ordinance review is not an onerous task. It really is a matter of just going through and cleaning up, in many cases, just cleaning up language. I would say that there are really only two commissions, preservation and LAC. Mm -hmm. They're going to have some significant work to be done because of the overlap. And as you'll see, they are they do not figure heavily in as lead implementers on, okay. on these particular plans. Really what we're talking about is EDC and Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. I mean those are those are really the two main players that we've been talking about tonight. So it depends on, on I mean I agree with you. I'd like to move it. Well Pat, something. I think Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, we're not asking them to complete work right. by that exactly. date. We're just looking right. for them to discuss it as far as how long do you think this is going to take? What's a reasonable estimate that they can give us? So if we were asking them to do a lot of work, I'd say we need to give them more time. But we're so, just asking for a discussion in their commission. So what do you think would be a reasonable I think so. I can't tell you that for the what, September is what you said. I think that's well, I think maybe the first thing to do is, is, is schedule a super committee where all the chairs meet. Because they're the ones that are going to have to talk to each other about how do you get plan and EDC and, and all of these different companies, or all these different committees and commissions to get together and talk. Maybe we should set, you know, maybe we should set a date for the super commission. Well, that could be, I mean, that could, be, could done. be in two weeks. That could be done, right. That could be done. And then now. That, at that commission, at that meeting, then they can talk to each other and set forth their, 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 their agendas and their plans. Just so the board knows, the EDC doesn't have another meeting scheduled until August um, because tonight is actually their meeting. Where most of them are here um, at this meeting. So, perfect. Um, I, I would probably say if you're going to 
more realistically would be October. Yeah, we need two meetings at least. Okay. But, but for uh, what, Pat? What were you thinking? I'm just looking for a time frame from that. Yeah. Not not any work. Two meetings for that. Yeah. Well, and I think it'll take um, them two meetings just to talk about um, how do we tackle each one of these items, and then during those discussions, they'll we'll be able to determine. We think this will take a month. This might take two months. Okay. Well, but wait, because yeah. one of the things, <laughs> see what you did. You yeah, fire. well, <laughs> I'm waiting for Pat to chime no, in with this. I think we need to be nice is, at the beginning, is, and then later we can put in these well, real firm well, The problem here is, and this, and this is one of the issues with having commissions as the lead implement. We can't be hamstrung by this once a month thing. Yeah, we, we do have the capability of having special needs. If we want to move this along, in, in some kind of expedited fashion, I don't think we can just have wait month after month after month. I mean, that's part of the problem. In fact, that's part of the review process that, that we're probably going to be talking about. So I mean, I, October seems like a long time away to me for, for just a preliminary report. It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> so uh, because really all we're asking is for you to take a look at the general task at hand and then give us an idea, and, and we know this is an estimate, we know this is an idea, to give us an idea of, of how long you think it's going to take you to have more, a more substantive report back to us. So I would, I would agree that September would be more realistic. We'll have our second meeting early in September. You know, we're, our meetings are early in the month, I believe. Yeah. So, so do we want to say that by our second meeting in September? Excuse me, but also on some of these pro on some of these projects and tasks, you have non commissions included, like floss, and you have the bicycle club. Right. So somehow they have to be put into this mix of the meetings and the reports and right. Whatever I just, I just didn't hear you I mention. Think, I think too that um, it's not necessarily the work is not necessarily going to be done at the commission meetings. So you know, the, the timetable needs to come from that. But then once you get into some of these different projects, it's going to be a different group that meets to you know what I mean. It's not going to be just when EDC meets that that will be discussed or whatever. It will be. They need to bring in the players and get that work done. So it wouldn't necessarily just be at the commission meeting. So like subcommittees. So right. That kind of I, that's what I'm foreseeing happening. So second, our second meeting in September, do you think you could give us a general report back? I mean, I serve on a lot of committees at my church. We do a lot of things, committee discussions by email. You know, we, can't, we have but to be careful, careful about, about that. About that. We, we have, have, we have constraints on email use. But we, yeah. They do too. Yeah, they do. They're governed by the same. So we don't we don't think that we should get the super committee up off the ground. No, I think that I don't see any reason why we can't have that meeting between between that and you know, like in the next. Because I, well, I think they should right. meet as soon as possible. Right. And elect a super chairman. And <laughs> so, I mean, because I mean, it, nothing really gets going unless they all start talking. Right. Um, because they're all, you have them all these different these different tasks, and EDC needs historical, which needs a cycling club, which needs floss, and if you don't have them all together, at least talking to start to build. Well, Peter, Peter, and I will work on scheduling that that meeting. But to Ben's point, that's why phones exist too. Right, and email. Right. Okay. So, anything else? I think we. Got a lot done tonight. So we do have a we do have a need for an executive session this evening to discuss the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body. So I'd ask for a motion to adjourn to executive motion. session. No action will be taken and taken, and we will not reassure. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Foley, second by Mr. Ballerine. Please call the roll. Trustee Sussman. Trustee Sussman. Trustee Sussman. Trustee Collins. Aye. Trustee Foley. Aye. All right.